Dear colleagues and friends of the International Association for Media Education, thank you very much for inviting me to your online seminar, Meet Media Educators All Around the World and Their Challenges During COVID Crisis. Receiving an invitation to your conference usually comes with the benefit of traveling to Belgium, France or Italy. Yet, after one year of COVID, we have all got used to meeting each other while sitting in our home offices. For the past two terms, I have been teaching in front of my IKEA bookshelf. However, I'm currently speaking to you while sitting in my rocking chair, a chair older than myself, to which, thanks to COVID, I gave the leading role in some YouTube videos. But allow me to introduce myself first. My name is Thomas Knaus and I live in the German towns of Frankfurt am Main and Ludwigsburg. In Frankfurt, I have been running research projects in and with schools for the past 20 years. I'm currently Professor of Educational Informatics and Head of the Frankfurt Center for Educational Technology. In Ludwigsburg, I'm a Professor of Educational Science and Head of Department of Media Education. The primary focus on my teaching is media education. One remarkable thing in Ludwigsburg is that uh, media education is an essential subject for all students. So Ludwigsburg provides all future teachers with the opportunity to acquire media literacy and encourages them to foster the media literacy of their future students. In line with my teaching, my research deals with media and digital literacy and especially with the digital change in educational institutions. I'm also interested in educational informatics and methods of uh, and met and methods and approaches of media research. I also work on a voluntary basis for a number of institutions, including the Association for Media Education and Communication Culture, GMK, as a spokesperson for the qualitative research section and as a member of the steering group of the Alliance No Education Without Media, Carbon. I'm also project manager of the Open Access project Forschungswerkstatt Medienpädagogik. Two winters ago, I had uh, just started a research term in Sydney when I first heard about coronavirus. During that period, I already kept in contact with my colleagues and students via Zoom. I also was planning to go to Vienna directly afterwards, where I had accepted um, a guest professorship. However, in the end, my visit to Vienna turned out to be completely online too. There were no horse carriage ride through nighttime Vienna, no Wiener Schnitzel, but neither, just to mention a positive effect, any high emission plane journeys. To make a long story short, my team and I had already collected some experiences in uh, online teaching when the first COVID term started in Germany. And today I want to tell you a little more about these teaching experiences at Ludwigsburg University. My team and I are responsible for ensuring that 6,000 students of education meet the theories and concepts of media education. Having media education as an essential subject for all students is pretty cool. Even if this requires us to deal with over 800 students per term. In consequence, my lecture is crowded with 400 student, students every term. One may ask in any case, if a lecture with 400 students is truly the best way to promote media literacy and to discuss media education, I introduce the students to the basic theories and concepts, but is that all that future teachers and educators need? Since I have been in Ludwigsburg, I have therefore considered to redesigning the lecture. One very good format, as I find, uh, was that I had used in my previous workspace, the University of Erlangen Nürnberg. In Nürnberg, I offered a lecture with several corresponding seminars. The lecture served to present key theories and concepts the parallel seminars allowed the students to work in small groups to discuss and reflect what they have learned. It was action-oriented and practical. This is actually 
what I like to do in, in Ludwigsburg too. However, with 400 students and seminars of 40, this would require 10 additional courses. And it is unrealistic to expect that the university to finance these additional courses. So while it is great that media education is an essential part of all study programs, we are actually lacking the necessary lectures to provide for their teaching. But let us return to the challenges posed by COVID. While I was still in Sydney, I started wondering how to organize the online semester. A lecture conducted as a video conference didn't make much sense, neither for me nor for the students. Uh, it did not seem to be helpful to, pre to replace the regular main lecture by simply streaming it over Zoom. By a lucky coincidence, however, I had been recording videos of my lectures for some time to use them as a short clip for a master seminar. Some years before, I had already reorganized this master seminar into an inverted classroom. I'm sure most of you know the concept of inverted classroom or flipped classroom. Let me uh, introduce it quickly. This teaching methods in, involves flipping the teaching of course content and homework. In regular classes, the teacher is responsible for teaching content and the students are responsible to revising this content at home. In a flipped classroom, however, the students are responsible to preparing uh, for the, the, the content at home. In class, they spend their time to clarify questions and discuss critical topics. Actually, this method has been a standard in university seminars for a long time. Students read a text at home and discuss it in class. In my master seminar, I supplemented these texts with video material on the platform Moodle showing lectures and talks. Based on these videos and additional reading, the students then prepared online readings. In the seminar sessions, we then discussed key aspects of each topic. In the past online terms, I was able to conduct this March seminar without making too many changes and revisions. Actually, there is no major difference if the meeting take place in person or online. The video conference software proved to be very useful for discussions in seminar groups. Instead of working on written research papers, I also encouraged the students to produce their own videos, for example, in the style of tutorials. Doing so, they work intensively on each topic and they follow students profit from these videos as well. My positive experience with this course inspired me to test this concept in a slightly modified format for lectures too. Last spring, I uploaded the recordings of the lectures to YouTube, created a link to the videos for each session and added literature for further reading. Most certainly, the recordings of my lectures are, let us say, not perfect at all. I would probably not have uploaded them into, in, into the net if we hadn't been working under such unique circumstances. However, under COVID conditions, even less good videos prove to be better than nothing. Over the course of the term, I regularly meet the 400 students participating in course and course on Zoom. I, I use the large group sessions to answer remaining questions about the videos and the reading materials following in the first few minutes of each course with the, which we spent together I dispatched the students into 50 breakout rooms to work in small groups. Later on, we discussed the results of this group work with the large group. I picked the students for the breakout sessions randomly so that they would have the chance to get to know each other a little. This is also helpful to foster personal contact between the students why by now I have been absent from campus for two or three terms. This was also the reason why I continued to allow private chats during my courses, even if someone of my colleagues suspected that this might dis distract the students. Every session, we had two or three of these discussion groups, I got the impression that the new format of the, uh, of the lecture 
permitted the students to work with a greater interest and insight on the material. By using the new format, I was able to activate the, the students to work more intensively on the topic. Of course, I know there were students among the 400 who were at best interested in listening only and refused to, to participate in the breakout sessions. However, students sleeping with their heads on the desk are, usual, are also a usual phenomenon in standard lectures, isn't it? So it seems far to say that the pandemic has motivated me not only to think about the lecture, but also to improve its educational format. Of course, it is always possible to achieve more and I would like to continue trying to make structural improvements to the provision of media literacy. But for the meantime, I'm happy to be able to sustain teaching, teaching and uh, even to improve it a little bit. The feedback provided by the students confirms the positive outcomes so far. Many students are coping well with the emergency online semester. But where there is light, there is also shadow. Among the significant disadvantages are that studying uh, is becoming increasingly efficient. Students are increasingly discouraged to take notice of anything beyond their studies and they, have, they are becoming increasingly isolated and even lonely. Let me give you two examples. When we were students, we used to chat over a coffee. This often resulted in missing lectures, but in learning something different. At present, these kinds of accident accidental encounters do rarely take place. I also noticed over the year that I was getting an increasing number of student email. My inbox is always full. However, students in lack of meeting fellow students are now asking us many questions which they would usually discuss among themselves. This, point at the this points at the problem that students during an online semester hardly get to know each other. I have been trying to provide them with some opportunities to interact in discussion groups, but this is clearly not enough. In an attempt to protect myself from, from having to, to answer recurring questions, I composed a list of frequently asked questions for my Moodle course. I have now come to add video clips to make it a little more entertaining. I make these videos on purpose, not while sitting at my office desk, but while sitting in my rocking chair. The idea is to present at least some relaxed academic attitude to students during these online semesters. We spend all day sitting at our desk during video conferences or when answering mails. What university teaching at present is lacking is some didactic reduction, situations where we lean back a little to discuss and debate academic topics in a non-formal way. This is a void that I'm seeking to fill by making short tutorials. You may find typical questions from my lectures and seminars in my series Media Education from my rocking chair on YouTube. Whilst German schools have struggled to provide emergency online teaching during lockdown, university, university have done fairly well over the past semesters. Most certainly performative subjects such as art, music or sport have found the situation particularly dif difficult. And also the natural science have struggled without access to labs or workshops. But at large, it seems far to say that the, on, that the online terms have worked out well. I have come to this conclusion not merely based on my Zoom experience, but also based on other scholars' findings. Two months ago, we released a call for papers for the Ludwigsburg contributions to media education in which we ask people to contribute their creative experience of online teaching. The, rea the reaction was overwhelming. 65 scholars offered a contribute. This is a pretty amazing number. But now, um, their the exposés prove how skillful many colleagues have dealt with the current challenges. 
We will publish the first contributions shortly. If you had asked me, let us say a year ago, where I found, where I would place German universities on a scale of digital teaching, I would have answered in the Stone Age. But now, only about one year later, it has become clear how creative we are. While we have not been so great in flattening the COVID curve, um, we have certainly raised our personal learning curves with regard to media-based teaching. I will leave you at this point with this positive observation from Germany. Many thanks once again for taking an interest in my work. I hope next time we'll be able to meet in person. I wish you all the best for the online conference, a stimulating exchange of ideas and successful webinar. Thank you and goodbye.